What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Now, if you listen to the Anti-Gravity Group podcast or watch the live streams after the podcast, you might be familiar with the fact that I've kind of talked a little bit about a top secret rocket project. Um, and the reason it's been top secret is because I've specifically been trying to keep it from Taylor, co-host of the Anti-Gravity Group podcast and one of my best friends in the rocketry world. There is a good reason for that, though. If you do listen to the podcast, you're probably familiar with the fact that Taylor has for years been procrastinating the build of his Mad Cow Bowmark, one of these. So uh, after he started talking about how it's a little bit more involved than just a sort of normal rocket build, I started getting interested in it. I was looking at the instructions and it is a little more on the side of woodworking than most rocket builds are. And you'll see why here in a little bit. But I started getting curious about it as well. And I was like, the Bowmark is pretty cool. And it looks like a fun build that's a little bit outside the norm, so to speak, for high power rocketry. Although this isn't really technically high power. You could fly it on an H, it'd probably be fine. Uh, so yeah, one came up locally for sale. A friend of mine, Dave Pierce, had it for sale. And I decided, let's let it ride. I'll buy one and... Getting to build mine before Taylor does is just a little bit of icing on the cake. So, spoiler alert, Taylor knows by the time you're seeing this video, so feel free to talk about it in the comments of the podcast or whatever else. Um, let's dig in and see what we gotta do with the Bowmark. Uh, this is a little bit different of a setup. I'm just using my GoPro and a clamp mount, talking to it first, and no audio equipment, nothing fancy. We're just gonna throw it up on the workbench and I'm gonna cut it to voiceover mode and we're gonna start building the Bowmark. The first step in the instructions for the Bowmark is to build the motor mount assembly, but I figured I'd just dive right into the hard part. Building the Bowmark is as much a middle ground between building a rocket kit and an airplane kit as you'd assume based on its appearance. There's a lot of balsa components and while it's not particularly difficult to build, it is a bit tedious. The first step was to glue the plywood components of the wing together. The wing is multiple pieces of pre-cut 1 8 inch plywood that you glue together and then laminate with several pieces of 8 inch balsa. I glued the plywood wing pieces together with CA, but for most of the woodworking components of this build, I'll be using run of the mill wood glue. Once the wings, plywood, and balsa components were glued together, I set that aside to dry, later to be trimmed and airfoil shaped vaguely by hand. There will be plenty of that. Let's move on. It's time to move on to the portion of the build that makes the Bowmark truly look like a Bowmark. The conduit. It's the long tube shaped component that runs alongside the rocket's airframe with both a nose cone at the forward end and a boat tail that shapes around the vertical stabilizer at the aft end and seemingly runs around the wing. Here's the catch with that conduit on this particular kit though. It's not pre-shaped. Instead, the building process consists of effectively gluing a bunch of quarter by half inch and quarter by quarter inch square balsa dowels into a block that connects the wing and tail assembly. I highly recommend you check out the instructions for this kit if you want a more in-depth look at this whole process, but for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to let you jam to the music and watch me play with an amassment of wood glue, balsa, and clamps. Once the box shape foundation for the conduit is laid into place, it's up to the builder, that's me in this case, to finalize the shape of the entire thing. While I'm not exactly what one might call a detail-oriented scale enthusiast, I did want it to look good, so I really took my time here crafting the shape into what I wanted. I did cut the rough shape with power tools, however, it mostly just consisted of a lot of staring at pictures of real bow marks and eyeballing it into a shape that I would eventually land on being close enough. Mm -hmm. 
Now this step is technically supposed to come before the shaping of the conduit, but I was worried I would break the components so I waited until after. There are two quarter inch triangle shaped balsa dowels that you trim to the length of the whole wing and tail assembly and glue to the bottom of the entire length of the conduit on either side. This creates a rough channel for the body tubes to fit into, and to get the right fit, you wrap the body tubes with sandpaper and gently run your assembled wing, tail, and conduit assembly along the sandpaper to fit it against the tube. And from here on out, I'm calling that whole wing, tail, and conduit assembly the airplane looking thingy. Are you keeping up here? Good. After multiple days of eyeballing everything, making corrections, smoothing things out, messing them up and sanding mistakes away, staring at things to see if they're symmetrical, asking my cousin Shane, or as you may know in Postart, if things are symmetrical, and deciding that I don't really care if it's not perfectly symmetrical, it was time to build the motor mount assembly, glue it in the airframe, take the whole airplane looking thingy assembly, and set it to the side while I work on the pod tube assembly. All right, I know we're having a good time with the Bowmark video, but I have to interject here for just a second to tell you about the L3 Dream Giveaway, my new merch, my new t-shirt that's available for pre-order right now. Sam did this awesome 50s style graphic that you're looking at right now, and uh, it's going to be available for pre-order. I will order a batch at the end of March, and then I'll order a batch at the end of April, so delivery should be early April and then early May, so hopefully if you want them for LDRS or... Uh, NSL or whatever else, they'll be delivered on time for that. Here's what we're doing. I'm giving away a Wildman Extreme Wildman, Kevlar Shock Cord Force at Extreme Wildman, a 75mm Aeropack retainer, and a $100 Wildman gift card for you to finish it out however you see fit. A full level 3 capable rocket setup, a rocket that can go around 15,000 feet with as much motor as you can put in it. So I've been wanting to do a giveaway like this for a long time, so I'm glad that we finally got it all sorted out. And the way that this works is every dollar that you spend on rocketvlogs.com, the Square site that it redirects to, or at Shane's website, hprtools.com, gets you one entry to win, say, the L3 Dream giveaway. The first person to order a t-shirt after I post this video is going to get a Fluctus. So... I have a full Fluctus that was given to me by Eric from Great Western Buildings. It's the older one with the separate ground station. The one that's for desktop, not for your phone. But I'm pretty sure that you can just get the mobile Bluetooth one and it functions with the flight computer that we have. And then one of the random orders is going to get a Comspec PR100 receiver as well for RDF tracking. So the Fluctus will be given to the first buyer after I post this video of one of the t-shirts and then someone who buys anything from the website either from HPR Tools or from RocketVlogs.com. One random person is going to get the PR100. And like I said, every dollar you spend gets you entered to win the L3 Dream Giveaway Kit Bundle. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. I hope you enjoy the new t-shirts and the new design. It's really, really cool. And after this giveaway situation is done, I, this design is never coming back. So you have two months to buy one, basically. And then you'll have to hold your peace. You'll be forced to. Anyway, back to the Bomark video. Oh, you thought it was time to glue the airplane looking thingy on, huh? No, no, there's still plenty to do. The other signature element of the Bowmark is the two ramjet pod tubes that sit beneath the wing. These consist of two plywood fins that require the builder to laminate them with balsa and you guessed it, sand them into an airfoil shape by eyeballing it. From there, they get glued into a through the wall assembly on both the main airframe tube and the pod tube. I glued these in with CA and did fillets with West System Epoxy and Colloidal Silica Filler, both to the pod tubes and the airframe tube. I knew I was going to be setting the weight of this thing down on those tubes, so I wanted to make sure they were very securely fastened. Now with that out of the way, it is almost time to glue the airplane looking thingy to the airframe looking thingy. What? But first, we have to get to the worst part about this kit, at least in my humble opinion. You see, per the instructions, you drill three holes in the airframe tube and through the center of the Bowmark's conduit to add an additional structural bonding point. That makes perfect sense. That's not what I'm taking issue with. That's fine. However, with those dowel pieces sticking through the airframe, one might assume that the shock cord could get hung up on them. Fortunately, the designers of this kit thought of that and came up with a solution, and that solution is my least favorite part of this kit design, 
by Miles. It's a centering ring with a notch cut out of it to keep the shock cord on the opposing side of the tube, which is a great solution except for the fact that for some godforsaken reason, they made the ring the same outside diameter as the coupler. So you have to carefully tack the centering ring onto the top of the coupler. Why didn't they just make it fit inside the coupler? It would have been so much less finicky. Oh, also somewhere in the middle of all this, I put rail buttons from Apogee on there. They have T-nuts that go through the backside and the rail button itself slip fits over the T-nut barrel protruding from the airframe tube. And it's really satisfying for one, but it's also a really elegant solution for lightweight rockets that don't have centering rings to put the rail buttons into. Or like in this case, one eighth inch plywood centering rings aren't going to do you very much good to try and drill into anyway. Super good stuff. It's not quite as annoying as the centering ring that's the same diameter as the coupler, but there is a little bit of another annoyance that follows right afterwards. The instructions recommend performing this whole operation of gluing the airplane looking thingy to the lower airframe tube and then sliding the upper airframe tube over the coupler with the tacked in place centering ring sitting on top of it. So you're kind of wedging the upper tube up against your quarter inch balsa triangle shaped channel components and it's a really tight fit as one might imagine because those components are supposed to be touching to be glued together. So I blatantly ignored this and glued the tubes together before I put the airplane looking thingy on both of them at the same time. After that initial bond stuff dried, I applied a fillet of West System Epoxy with 410 Microlite fairing filler around the entire conduit, including under the wing and horizontal stab of the airplane looking thingy and that, my friends, brings us to the point you have all been waiting for. Folks, it is time for that sweet, sweet, premium, high-end, Rodeo Drive quality sanding channel content that you all absolutely smash that like button for. Just demolish that like button. And while you're there, if you haven't already, get up on that top rope and hit that subscribe button with a flying elbow that'll send it straight to the bottom of Davy Jones Locker. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Hit the buttons though. Eventually, I decided that the fillets were all to the point that I could live with and sprayed it with automotive filler primer. And you know what? I hated it. Man, nothing quite humbles you out like fillets that you think look pretty smooth and then you hit them with a little bit of color and it just looks like the Rocky Mountains. So I sanded and sanded and sanded and sanded until I couldn't take it anymore. I think I've discovered that I secretly like sanding. I just have to be in the right mood for it. There's something very tranquil about it, especially when I get to set up the video like this. I just kind of let it roll and then do a voiceover because I just got podcast blasting, got the respirator on. A few moments later. I can't go on like this. I just have to accept it. This, right? Scale. Those are stick welds. They don't always look very good. These are all choices that I made and not things that I missed. But if I keep going, I will keep going forever, okay? Sometimes good enough is good. We talked about this in my high glossy metallic video. Go watch that one if you want. Good enough is good. There's still a chance this thing gets destroyed anyway, right? And you know what? I lied. I sanded it some more. I kept sanding and sanding and sanding until I finally gave up and painted it white and I still hated it. But you know what I did? I sucked it up. I realized that this is just going to see a bunch of damage driving to the launch site or being stored and moved around all the time anyway. And I made some decals for it. I decided to go with the Canadian livery because after all, this was a bit of a meme on my friend Taylor, who's like a proper Bowmark enthusiast. So I thought he'd like if I reserved the OG black, red and white livery for his Bowmark. Plus the Canadian livery is kind of symbolic of the conflict that was created when the US sold these things to Canada because they were nuclear capable and some other countries weren't too fond of that. Isn't that fascinating? Anyway, I think that's probably more than enough of me rambling into a microphone for you. So uh, here's me rambling at the camera instead. And there it is, folks. The Mad Cow 2.6 inch Bowmark in all of its glory. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect. If you ever see this thing in person at a launch that I'm at, you'll get a chance to take a look at all my, uh, my scale stick welds, which is a joke I'm going to continue to use. So be prepared to hear that in person as well. But overall, I'd say it came out pretty dang good, but it is quite a bit heavier than I anticipated. So I'm thinking we're gonna have to put an H motor in this. 
I have an H220, which I think would be great for it. And uh, I actually just got a bunch of Pro 29 CTI hardware from Taylor. And I know AMW Pro X has quite a bit of smaller CTI stuff in stock. So uh, I might have to just see what Robert's got available because they're not too far away from me. And I know he ventures out in my direction every once in a while. But the big reveal, I'm sure you're curious how this went. Like I said, this started as sort of a, a gag on Taylor for trying to get him to build his. So uh, here you go. Here's the clip of his reaction to my Bomar. No <laughs> way. <laughs> it was so easy. It took me like two weeks. Two weeks? <laughs> yeah. That sounds like... I thought you said you could build it in a couple of days. Uh, like the hard part, yeah. For the most part. Built in a couple Careful of Careful the pods like, aren't glued in yet, but otherwise... So like the fully finishing. It's scale. There's like some scale stick welds on there. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good though, huh? When did you get this? Dang. Pretty sick, huh? You Bull should build one. Bullmark Drag Race? Yeah, I figured I would do the Canadian livery because I figured you'd probably yeah. like the black one. We can't both be... Dude, I made those decals. You like that? It came out pretty good. Dude, the Bo a Bullmark Drag Race would be pretty hectic. Yeah, <laughs> really dangerous. <laughs> those fly straight, though. Pretty good. It sounds like a Bullmark Drag Race is in the future. And with that, this video comes to an end. Finally, I've been working on this for so long. Um... Super stoked to bring it to you guys. My name is Brayden Carlson. That's B-R-A-D-E-N. Brayden, not Brandon. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't. A real vast majority of the people who watch the videos aren't subscribed. And I see a lot of the same people in the comments, but you're still not subscribed. It's free. There's no obligations. Just make sure you hit the subscribe button. Then you will be able to see when I upload new videos and keep up with everything that I've got going on. And there is a lot going on. Don't forget to go check out the new Anti-Gravity Group YouTube channel if you want to keep up with the Anti-Gravity Group podcast and some other light video stuff occasionally will be going up there as well. You just watched a Rocket Vlogs video and I will see you all next time.